This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome to Kumar Consulting. So guys, uh, in this session, once again, I'm going to explain a pretty important question which was asked from one of your batchmates during the interview held in TCS. So it's, it's very important question, guys. Just have a look on the question and then I'll explain the answer as well. Now look at the question. The question is, what do you mean by foreign currency revaluation? How to configure it and how did it work? Now, if you talk about question, guys, uh, in a single line, interviewer has asked several questions here. Like, what do you mean by, if you talk about me, uh, look at you, what do you mean by foreign currency revaluation? It could be a separate questions. How to configure it? Again, it's separate questions. How did it work it? Right? This is also going to be a separate explanation. And again, from your explanations, from your explanations, interviewer is going to derive several other questions. So I'll tell you guys, this one single topic, this one single topic is going to be a reason of your selection. So we'll have a look. We'll have a look one by one. Okay. First of all, we have to understand what is this foreign currency revaluation or what is this revaluation process all about? Okay. And then we'll proceed further with the other uh, questions. So now here, first of all, we need to understand the meaning of this foreign currency revaluation. How did it happen? So I'll just quote a pretty simple example here to make you people understand this foreign currency revaluation. Now, let's suppose I always take this example of Tata Motors. So once again, now Tata Motor is having certain Every company, whichever the companies are there, guys, I'll tell you generally, all companies, all companies are having almost whichever the medium size and big organizations are there, they'll be having cross border trade. OK, because and this is how the companies are going to be called as MNCs, right? So now here cross border trade in the sense they'll be having customers. From foreign countries, they'll be having vendors from foreign countries and all. Right. So it means several transactions are taking in foreign currencies. Now we'll talk about several foreign currencies are there, guys. I'll take example of USD. I'll take example because this is a global currencies. Most of the trades, most of the payments are going to be, you know, accepted in US currencies itself. Right. So we'll take example of USD. Now Tata Motor is having certain foreign vendors. Let's suppose. OK, so these are the vendors. Now, see, for example, we are having certain. So against these all vendors, we are having certain open items. It means we have procured a goods worth of 100, 200, 300. And again, some uh, different amount, let's suppose. 250. OK, so these all amounts are there in dollar. OK, because the transaction has taken place into foreign currency. Right, the vendors are going to send you the invoices in foreign currency itself. So even the transaction also will be posted in foreign currency itself. Right, so now here. OK, so now what is so if you talk about the payables, total payable right now for this foreign vendors. OK, so what is the total payable for foreign vendors guys? It is. Total how much? So eight hundred fifty dollars, right? Your. Eight fifty dollar is the total payable. OK, now whenever this transaction has taken place, let's suppose whenever this transaction has taken place. So at that point of time, the currency in the sense dollar value was what 
So let's suppose it was 50 INR Indian currency, right? This was the exchange rate. Now here 50 rupees means one dollar equals to 50 rupees. Okay. Now here. So what will happen? Now we'll do one thing. So here we are going to convert this whatever dollar value is there that is going to be converted into our local currency. It means your company code currency. So 100 multiplied 50. So how much it is? 5000. This is going to be 10,000 in terms of rupees I'm talking about. This is going to be 15,000, right? And what about this 250? 250 multiplied. Okay, now here 250 multiply how much? So 12,500. Now, so it means what is the total payable here? That is, look at here, it is 42,500. This is the total payable. Okay. Now, say for example, uh, this is the total payable on 2nd of March. Okay, so if it means if we are going to make payment on 2nd of March, then how much amount we are going to make payment guys? We have to make payment. It means from your bank account, this much rupees, this much amount is going to be deducted, right? By your uh, like let's suppose in whichever bank account you are having amount it means we have to make payment of this much local currency and then bank is going to convert into dollar and that is going to be paid to the vendors right so now here what is the total payable as of now 42500 now let's suppose let's suppose On 31st of March, the financial statement is going to be published. So before that, it need to be prepared. So whenever, whenever, let's suppose financial statement during the generation of financial statement. Okay. So in financial statement, whatever your payables are there, that is also going to be, you have to specify whatever the receivables are there, that is also going to be specified, right? So now let's suppose the total payable this for foreign vendors, it is 42,500 rupees. So if you specify here 42,500 rupees, that this is our total payable, right? So now what will happen guys, there is one more thing. So on this 31st March, on this 31st March, what is happening? The price of USD has gone up and it become, let's suppose, this much. Okay. Yes, it means the fluctuation has taken place and foreign currency, it means USD value has gone up and now one USD equals to how much Indian currency it is 55 rupees, right? So, but as per, if you look at your, if you look at your books of account, it shows that our total payable is 42,500 rupees, right? But on 31st, on 31st March, once we are going to publish our financial statement, you have to show your total payable, receivable, whatever the things are there. So now here the total payable for this foreign vendor payables I'm talking about, it is 
42,500. But if you add this 42,500 in your, uh, what to say, uh, financial statement, is this a correct figure? Not at all. This is not at all a correct figure. Why? Because now, now whatever the total, what to say, payables are there, that is going to be changed because on 31st March, look at here, the currency price is different. USD value is different. So what we have to do, it means we have to revaluate, right? Once again, once again, we have to check the value. So we have to revaluate. Now look at here, the total dollar is how much? Total, how much payment we are going to make? 850, right? So now we'll do one thing. Now here, $850 multiply 55. So now how much it is? 46,750, right? So the total payable is 46,750. It means instead of 42,000, now how much we are going to pay guys? We are going to make payment of 46,750, right? So once we have revaluated, once we have revaluated this, uh, the total payable, then what is happening here? How much we are supposed to pay? Now we are supposed to pay 46,750 rupees. Now, you just do one thing, 46,751 rupees minus 42,500. So what is the difference? There is a difference of 4050. It is a negative value. There is a difference of, it means if you're going to minus this from 42,000, this is the uh, generally payable amount as per our books of account. But what is the actual payable guys? The actual payable is 46,750. So from the total payable as per your books of account, from that, from total payable, if you're going to minus this actual table then what is the difference difference is here 42,050 rupees 42,000 here 42,050 rupees and that too it's a negative value it means this is your loss right we are under loss of what we are under loss of 4200 50 rupees okay now at the same time say for example just we'll go for a different scenario also now say for example on 31st of march if the same this usd price let's suppose it has dropped and it is only like 48 rupees 48 INR. in that case what will happen guys in that case now here in that case 850 multiply 48 so look at here 40800 right in that case now total payable is still 42500 itself right i'm just giving a different example okay if the currency price is more then we are under loss of 4250 rupees but if the USD value is coming down, isn't it? Both things are possible. If it is coming down, then what will happen, guys? Then how much we are going to pay? Then we have to pay 40,800 rupees only. 40,800 rupees, we have to make payment, right? Now, you just minus this. So, minus what? 42,500, right? 42,500. So how much it is? 1700. 1700. But this 1700 will be, this 1700 is going to be in plus. Okay. This 1700 will be in positive value because if you're going to reduce this 40,800 is, is going to be reduced from which one? 42,500, right? So this will be a positive value and it means this is our gain right but what is happening guys 
whichever this value we have calculated whatever the value we have calculated right this value we have calculated to know the exact figure in the sense to know the exact payable or in terms of receivable also the same example will be there right i've just quoted an example of payable it could be the same things are going to be applicable even on receivable also so to know the exact value of total payables or receivables right so now what is happening on 31st of march our total payable is either this one if the currency value is more right in case of if it become 50 INR if it is less if it become 48 INR then the total payable is this much right either 46,750 or it could be 40,800 it could be any figure guys I have just quoted I've taken one example in case of the price is like currency value has gone up or in case the currency value has came down now so if it is gone up then what is happening we are under loss and if it is the value is currency value is coming down then we are under gain right because we have to make let's suppose gain why gain because we have to make payment of 40,800 if you make payment of 40,800 rupees in that in 40,800 rupees itself what is happening your bank is going to convert this 850 this 40,800 is going to get going to be converted into 850 dollar and this 850 dollars are going to be paid by this 850 dollars all these four vendors are going to be paid right so this is how it is happening now here let's suppose so we are under gain and in case of currency value is uh, like more than we are under loss of this much now so this on 31st since we are generating our financial statement right so that is why we have calculated the actual payable right the actual payable but whatever this gain or loss is there right is it a real gain or is it a real loss no this is not a real gain or this is not at all a real loss okay on 31st we have calculated that this is our total payable right if in case of more if the currency value is more and if in case of currency value is less then this is the total payable but the actual payment might be uh, let's suppose it's it's going to be made on 7th of april or might be 10th or 12th or 15th of april so uh, this is you know like actual payable is going to be made, made after 10 days 15 days or 20 days so on 31st simply we have just calculated a value on paper itself and we are saying that this is our total payable right so there is a difference certain differences are there those differences if the differences are under negative then that is your loss but if the differences are under positive then that is your gain now so even though we are having gain or loss but this is not a real gain or real loss why because actual payment is not going to be made on 31st right when the actual payment is going to be made guys the actual payment let's suppose is going to be made on 10th of april right so it means this is your what is happening guys this is not the real gain or this is not a real loss right this is unreal loss or unreal gain so it is also called so what is happening guys so this is called it is called unrealized loss or it is called unrealized gain okay this is called unrealized gain right though it is a gain and this is this is gain or loss but this this is unrealized unrealized why it is unrealized guys because as of 31st as of 31st march we are having we are having either this much loss or this much gain right so this is unrealized why because 
we don't know what will happen in future might be on 7th of april there could be a different uh, what to say currency value will be different isn't it so that is why we are saying that this is unrealized loss or unrealized gain now what will happen say for example on uh, 10th of on 10th of april right on 10th of april what is happening on 10th of april uh, 1 usd equals to 1 usd equals to 52 inr on 10th of april let's suppose these all invoices become due so we are going to make payment on 10th of april right so now here what is happening guys so on 10th of april we are going to make payment and on 10th of april 1 usd equals to what is the value of 1 us dollar guys equals to 52 indian currency right so in that case what is happening in that case once again how much payment we are going to make guys we have to make payment of 850 dollar itself right 850 dollar we are going to make payment so now once again 850 dollar now here 850 multiply 52 so now we have to make what is the actual payment which we are going to make guys which we have to make that is 44200 the actual payment is going to be made 44200 and what is the total payment which we are supposed to make as per the books of account it is 42500 right so what is the differences guys if you reduce this 44200 from this 42500 then what is happening minus 42500 so what is the difference guys 1700 but this 1700 is in negative symbol right because this is this is smaller amount and this is a bigger amount right so it means it is our loss this is our loss but guys this is your actual loss why it is actual loss because on 10th of april we are going to make payment so your bank is saying that now if even though the moment you posted this transaction at that point of time different currency value was different but right now the you know value of this us currency is gone up the price of us currency gone up right so instead of 4000 42500 now how much you have to make payment guys now we have to make payment of 44200 so how much extra we are paying guys we are paying 1700 extra and this is real it means this much extra is going to be we have to make payment from our pocket so what is happening guys this is actual loss because we are making here we are making the actual payment here right at this point of time what was happening guys this was just we have calculated it was only calculated on a paper why to publish our financial statement and to show that the total what to say payable or receivable as of 31st of march but here what is happening guys on 10th of april we are going to make the actual payment so if you make the actual payment then we are under loss of 1700 and this is your real loss or actual loss so which is why it is called realized loss right this is your realized loss okay at the point of at the time of payment whatever the differences are taking place okay at the time of so realized loss means what guys or it could be realized gain also say for example now once again i'll take if it is 48 rupees right if it is if one usd equals to 48 rupees then what is happening these things are coming right same picture is coming okay in case of in case of 48 rupees okay so what will happen here again this is the what to say uh, total payable as per your books of account but what is the actual payable guys 
40,800. And what is the total difference is 1,700 and that to positive value because this actual payable is smaller than the whatever the actual payment which we are going to make is smaller than the payable which is there as per books of account. So now we are under gain of 1700, right? So this is your benefit, right? And this is called realized benefit, right? Because at the time of making payment, we are going to make payment of 40,800 rupees only to the bank and that is going to be converted into $850 and that is going to be that payment is going to be made to the vendors. So now here. So look at here, whichever the negative differences are there, that is our loss and whichever the positive differences are there, that is our gain. But the differences, the differences which is taking place at the time of actual payment is our either realized loss or realized gain, right? But if the difference is which is taking place at the time of, let's suppose, preparing the reports and all, if you're going to prepare any report at that point of time, if you need to know what is our total payable and receivables, so what will happen? Then we have to we have to go for revaluation, currency revaluation. We'll have to check as per like as of today, what is the price of this currency? What is the price of USD? Right, so we'll have to do this revaluations and then whatever the differences are there. So those differences are going to be treated as either that could be if it is negative value, then that is going to be treated as unrealized loss. Or if it is a positive value, then that is going to be. That is called unrealized gain. This conference will now be recorded. Now, so if you talk about foreign currency revaluation overall, like what do you mean by foreign currency revaluation? So look at here, guys. Uh, by means of this foreign currency revaluations, what is happening? We will come to know the actual payable or receivable on a particular point of time. And also, by means of this foreign currency revaluations, we will come to know the actual differences which is taking place. The differences which is taking place, why? The differences which is taking place due to the fluctuation in foreign, what to say, uh, exchange rate, right? So I'll just do one thing. So what is the exact answer you have to give in a systematic way that I have noted down here? Now it is and one more important thing guys, this currency revaluation is a, is a month in activity. OK, so look at here what I have specified here. It's a month in activity which is carried out to know the actual payable or receivable just now. Whatever I said, the same thing I have you know, noted down here guys. So it's a month in activity which is carried out to know the actual payable or receivable in local local currencies. Look at here, guys, whatever the amounts we are converting, we are going to convert into your reporting currencies in your local currencies, right? Local currency means what? That is your company code currency. OK, so now it's a month in activity which is carried out to know the actual payable or receivable in local currency. On a particular point of time, right? Hence, by means of currency revaluation process, what will happen, guys? we will come to know the actual differences which is taking place due to fluctuation in foreign exchange rate right why these differences are taking place guys the differences are taking place due to the fluctuation in uh, exchange rate only right currency prices are going up and down and this is the reason which is why to know the exact figure of your total payable or receivables right uh, we what what exactly we are doing guys we are going to revaluate the currency revaluations are happening because prices will it will be there will be ups and downs in the prices right now uh, even few more lines I have added here these differences either can be 
positive or negative of course that is already i have shown you guys so these differences can be either positive or negative whatever the positive differences are there that is going to be treated as gain and vice versa vice versa means whatever the negative differences are there that is going to be treated as your loss and you can add one more line here so whatever the gains are there that can be either your realized or unrealized gain and whatever the losses are there that could be your realized or unrealized unrealized loss now look at here from our answer itself once again interviewer is going to derive two more questions and what are the question what are those questions guys they can ask what do you mean by realized gain or loss or what do you mean by unrealized gain or loss so that is also i have noted down in a very simplest this one so look at here what do you mean by realized gain or loss so guys realized gain or loss is the actual difference differences resulted from currency devaluation which has taken place during payment right look at here during the actual payment whatever the differences are taking place right whatever this difference is positive or negative whatever the differences are there so during actual payment whichever the differences are there those differences will be treated as our realized gain or loss right but what about the unrealized gain or loss guys unrealized gain or loss is is a mere differences okay look at you it's a mere differences only it's just a calculation right unrealized gain or loss is a mere differences resulted from currency devaluation from unpaid transactions right whichever these transactions are there this is unpaid transactions and we don't know when it is going to be paid it might be after 10 days 15 days right so on a particular point of time what is happening we need to know the exact figure and that is why we have revaluated we have revaluated the currency uh, what to say prices and all and whatever differences are there that is going to be so during that process whichever the differences has taken place that is called unrealized loss or unrealized gain right if it is negative differences then it is unrealized loss and if it is positive differences then that is going to be treated as unrealized gain now so look at here we had a questions like what do you mean by foreign currency values so the answer i have given from your answer once again two more questions has been derived now the next question is how to configure it so guys i'll tell you generally what is happening if you talk about configuration part it means the interviewer is having something in their mind the moment you started explaining configuration means not like line by line each and everything you have to say but four or five steps let's suppose you guys are going to explain but the moment you say these four and five steps again from there also interviewer is going to derive certain questions right and uh, let's suppose if i am conducting an interview i can derive several questions or any interviewer can derive a uh, several questions okay uh, there could be a question like uh, you know uh, which kind of accounts are going to be assigned against kdb or which kind of accounts are going to be assigned against kdf or what should be that what is the difference between a kdb or you know kdf uh, apart from this like uh, what do you mean by uh, valuation method or what is the use of valuation method right or uh, generally what is the use of this valuation area right or what about this valuation method and what does it control so likewise several you know questions can be asked these all are the questions which can be asked by interview still i am able to remember guys when i had given uh, one interview i think one or one and half year back uh the same question was asked by interviewer and interviewer asked like uh, do you know this uh, foreign currency revaluation now what to say configurations and all i said yes i know then what was the questions what kind of question they asked they asked like uh, what do you mean by delta logic what do you mean by uh, you know rolling value what do you mean by currency translations right so i'll tell you guys from same topic 
look at the kind of questions which is being asked by interviewer. So it depends. The level of questions depends upon the kind of experience which you guys are going to justify. I was justifying 10 years of experience. This is why these kind of questions were there, right? If you talk about built a logic and all, this is a country specific settings, right? But you guys are going to specify, you guys are going to justify less than five years of experience, right? So the level will not be this one in the sense, whatever I asked, uh, I, I asked just now. Uh, this KDB, KDF, these are the simple, what to say, uh, things and very, what to say, uh, common topics you can see while configuration, these all things will come into picture and I'll explain in details what is the you know, use of these all things. So what will happen guys from your answer, several questions are going to be derived by interviewer. Okay, so we'll do one thing. Uh, in next session, in next session, I'm going to explain whatever the things I just know, like uh, during configurations, as I said, like several questions are going to be derived by interviewer, right? So if you cover those questions and all, then uh, what will happen? How many people are going to give a reply or response out of 100, hardly 2% or 3% of the people will be able to respond, right? And again, how does it work? From there also certain questions will be there. So these all things will be explained, guys. I have to record once again, one more session I have to record, or, or it could be two sessions also. Uh, depends upon the kind of explanations which I'm going to give, because uh, let's suppose this revaluation, during the evaluation process, what is happening, guys? Certain differences are taking place. Now, what about that? What about the treatment of those, those differences and all, right? It is, it is a kind of whatever the gain or loss is taking place. Of course, it's a kind of transactions. Certain accounting entry is going to involve. Certain GLs are going to be involved, right? So what should be the accounting entry? If there is whatever the unrealized gain is there, whatever the unrealized loss is there, whatever the realized gain is there, whatever the un, you know, realized loss is there, isn't it? And apart from this, uh, so there are several things, right? So uh, these all things, these all things will be explained one by one. Uh, so I think I'll have to record another, might be one session or two session. I, I guess it will take, that is going to be, it may take two sessions guys. So anyway, uh, we'll do one thing. So here in this session, what I have explained, I've explained about this foreign currency devaluation process theoretically. And in next session, whatever things I have explained just now, that is going to be clarified in next sessions. If possible, we'll cover in one session itself. If not, then might be going to be completed in two sessions. So that's all in this session, guys. And that's all. The remaining things are going to be recorded in next sessions.